watching us on NewsX and NewsX YouTube. My name is Devika Chopra. I have with me Mr. Patikrit Pai, a policy expert, and we'll be taking you through why is it that India has chosen the South Polar region of the Moon to land uh, Vikram as well as uh, for the entire space mission called Chandrayaan 2. Firstly, Patikrit, um, what makes this particular spot special is the fact that nobody's ever done it before. We've seen, of course, China, the US, Russia, they've all landed on the moon, uh, while China did it towards uh, the North Pole. Uh, US and Russia have stuck somewhere to the central uh, portions of the moon, and India will be the first country in the world to explore this part of the moon. Uh, Devika, there are two reasons for which, first, as you rightly explained, that it has been completely unexplored. Uh, secondly, uh, if you see the, uh, you know, the explorations that are being started by United States from 2020-21 onwards, the Artemis, gradually they are going to, you know, use Moon as a base for deep space exploration. So the base for the deep space exploration, the base that they would be creating in Moon, would be in the southern range of the southern part of the Moon, and that's why they are so much interested in this one. Secondly, the reason why, uh, you know, uh, this landing is happening in the southern part is because the the Pragyan payload, the, the rover that's going to uh, you know come out of the Vikram lander uh, four hours after the lander has actually landed, mm -hmm. that is going to carry certain critical equipment which will do seismic study. Secondly, it's going to look out for certain specific minerals in uh, in the moon, which are the possibility of whose existence are more in the southern pole, which includes the titanium dioxide, sodium dioxide, silica, magnesia. So these are the certain reasons because of which the you know the landing is happening primarily on the southern aspect of the pole, which otherwise has remained completely unexplored. And the reason being that I think there's a lot of interest from the you know the, the western countries especially america and nasa also is to since a lot of exploration has already happened on the other parts i think once india decided to go towards the moon i think there was perhaps a request from them also that since this has been the unexplored part let's look into this part also okay so not only is it untouched by humans at the same time Pratikrit, let's also uh, tell our viewers why is this particular part of the moon actually uh, very special it's also untouched by sunlight which means that it has a lot of um, undisturbed we could say records of the solar system so a lot of um, hints there regarding the formation of our solar system also lie in the southern portion of the moon well if we if we actually look at some of our uh, you know mythological books and our historical text that has, that has always been these indications given that water is always present in moon which otherwise was uh, debunked by the west for a long period of time and eventually it was found uh, water was found by one of the uh, you know payload that was sent by india secondly you you know the the, the source codes and actually the history or the origin the the, the the codes of the origin are all within this universe still, itself. That's why there is a strong reason that probably, you know, these, as you rightly stated, that some of the indications and studies if we, if we are, they are done on the moon, on the southern part, may actually prove effective into finding out the origin of the universe. Third is one of the reasons that they've always tried to avoid uh, the southern part is possibly the number of craters are much more over there. So landing over there, soft landing in any case has been a challenge for the West. Most of the time for their adventures when they landed, they didn't use a soft lander. They used something else of a technology which was much more rudimentary than the kind of technology that is available today. Since because there has been a technological leap over the last say two uh, you know, decades. So now the possibility of landing with a soft lander uh, and the maneuvering that you can do at, do, do at the last moment in case you find that there are uh, mm -hmm. uneven uh, you know, topography. That maneuvering capability is far more today. That's why the ventures are being done much more in the southern side today as compared to what was done in the past wherein the central and the northern parts are perhaps a little more easier to land on. Absolutely. And Patikra, I want to pick up on something that you said earlier as well. You mentioned that there are, of course, uh, larger and more craters on this part of the moon. Uh, what we're talking about is basically, like I said, they're untouched by uh, sunlight as well. So these are permanently shadowed areas of the moon where it's expected that there could be about 100 million tons of water. So this uh, next, uh, you know, we could call it the race for space uh, is also going to be focused on uh, who's really going to be finding the water and who's going to be tapping into water water as a resource on moon yes. first. So absolutely, uh, Devika, that's, if, if there is presence of water, then it, it actually fundamentally alters the way we perceive mm -hmm. the moon. That's one part of it. Secondly, 
uh, you know, if there is a presence of water, then uh, creating a base station and moon for deep space exploration becomes all the more easier because then you don't need to carry water for all your activities over there. Third reason is that uh, what this uh, Pragyan rover is also going to do is to explore the possibilities of finding some of the minerals which either may be present in small quantities on Earth or may not be present at all on Earth. And one of the reasons, uh, one of the you know things that is being expected is that it may fundamentally alter the frontier of telecommunication and aerospace if we can find some of the metals and minerals which are probably much more stronger and yet much more lighter than the kind of minerals or composite carbons that we have right now on earth so if you are looking at you know making fundamental and leap into frontiers of technology and for those for that the basic minerals if the kind of which are being will be explored by pragyan uh, if the kind of uh, results are favorable we don't know what we are looking at over the next 30 40 years in terms of how technology can be fundamentally altered so you know one reason is that your entire aerospace journey uh, your ability to go from one place to another with the use of a reusable rocket can become far more affordable if those kind of metals can actually exactly. be found so, so what you're saying is that if we were to say uh, so we have uh, we've we know of presence of water and then we're also looking at certain uh, elements like uh, hydrogen, sodium, you're looking at mercury, silver, all of these untapped resources are there in abundance on the moon. So what you're saying is that moon when it becomes a station, uh, space station in the future, so you uh, basically send your rocket to the moon, it lands there, yes. then it refuels yes. and it can then take then go a for journey deep, deep space uh, further. Exploration. That's one part of it. Secondly, first is exploration then your ability to actually create the, the base stations over there mm -hmm. and then your extraction starts. Extraction from moon of critical minerals and materials and bringing it back to earth will be otherwise at present level very expensive. But if we can alter the dimension of aerospace with the invention or the discovery of some you know, better kind of uh, metallurgy which will make it far more easier for a rocket to travel faster and come back at a very affordable rate. Then probably in the 30-40 years from now, uh, look at how 30-40 years back telecommunication as it is today was a distant dream. We don't know right. what we can happen in the next 40 years and for that metallurgy is going to play a very critical role. For example, the rare earth the minerals play a very criti critical role in terms of making our laptops and the mobile phones effective. So probably there might be some rare moon minerals uh, if they are present. They can fundamentally alter the way aerospace and telecommunication uh, in general and also probably med medicines can actually function. So that ex extraction part comes later but the exploration starts. Today we are in a position when exploration can be done by the machines in a far better way than mm -hmm. probably it was possible 30-40 years back. Right, absolutely. And of course, on that note, I thank Patikrit for joining us because uh, the conclusion is simple. The race for space uh, started way back, uh, back in the day, but it continues today. And uh, of course, Patikrit, we can conclude that Moon is, of course, uh, going to be the pit stop for all future space absolutely. explorations. And India is uh, hopefully going to be leading that race. Thank you so much for watching. You were watching us on NewsX YouTube as well as NewsX. For more such videos, Subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.